Okay, let's see. Uh, next up is the matter of Ayers versus, excuse me, McJames. Uh, Mr. White, you represent Ms. Ayers? I do, Your Honor. She's here with me. Okay, and then Ms. McJames is also present for the hearing. Yes, Give me sir. just a moment. I got to write myself a note so I don't forget something. Okay, we're here on Ms. Ayers' petition to enter a personal protection order. So, uh, Mr. White, I assume you're prepared to present testimony this morning? I am, Your Honor. Okay, uh, Ms. Ayers, can you turn the camera over to her? Good morning. Good morning. Would you raise your right hand, please? Uh, you do swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Uh, state your full name for the record. Kelly Annette Ayers. Uh, go ahead, Mr. White. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Kelly, where do you reside? I'm I know the respondent, Jasmine McJames. She is the girlfriend of my ex-husband. Have there been some recent um, change of custody actions that have been filed in the case between you and your ex-husband that have involved Ms. McJames? Yes. <clears throat> what was her involvement in this in the uh, issues with custody between you and your ex-husband? Uh, multiple Facebook messages. Um, that are extremely inappropriate and vulgar. Are these, uh, are these the messages that we attach to your petition? Yes. Uh, were any of these communications wanted or was this part of like an ongoing conversation with Ms. McJames? Um, they were not wanted. I did not want them. I do not respond to them. <clears throat> did she take some other actions um, regarding Child Protective Services against you? She called Child Protective Services against my husband. And what allegations did she make? Uh, that he was molesting my daughter. That he was sexually molesting your child? That is correct. And CPS has investigated that and found that Ms. McJames has filed a false report. Is that correct? That is correct. Did Ms. McJames also contact your employer? Yes. Um, stating that Who's, she... Oh, Who do you work for? I work for Howard Hanna as a realtor. Okay. And when did Ms. McJames contact your employer? Well, it was the same day she contacted CPS. <clears throat> and did she make some type of complaint regarding your behavior? No, just that she was a cash buyer and that I was acting as a racist. So she made an allegation to your boss that you're a racist? Yes. Did Ms. McJames hold herself out as white or black? Black. <clears throat> How did you handle this complaint made by Ms. James against the, that you made some type of racist information um, or racist statements to her? I had to sit down with my boss and speak to her about it. Did you, were you involved in selling Ms. McJames any type of real estate at all? No. No. Do you have any idea why she would call and fake that she's a person of color and make a racial bias complaint against you? I have no idea why. <clears throat> Is there any... How do all these different contacts from the fake, from the, the false CPS report about sexual abuse to the, to the uh, made up complaint to your employer, 
the email method or the Facebook messages, how do these all make you feel? Um, terrified. What else can she do? She knows where I live. <clears throat> is she still involved with your former husband? As far as I know, she is. Have you had discussions with your former husband about keeping Jasmine from contacting you? I did. He actually said I should get a PPO against her. And that's what you're asking the court to do is get a PPO that stops any contact. Is there any reason that you should have any contact with this person, Ms. McJames, at all? No, none. Thank you. That's all I have for now, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McJames, uh, did, were there any questions you wanted to ask Ms. Ayers? Um, not specifically to her, more just pertaining to the case with you and evidence that's that's been presented um all right let me let me put you under oath then sure. uh, raise your right hand please uh, you do swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you god yes your honor please state your full name for the record my name is jasmine jade mcjames so mcjames do you acknowledge that you are either the current or former girlfriend of his heir's ex-husband Yes, Mitchell Silvius is my ex-boyfriend at this time due to a lot caused by a very messy custody battle. All right, so the two of you are no longer together? Not at this time, Your Honor, no. All right, so, so there were a number of text messages that were attached uh, to the petition. Uh, do you acknowledge that you're the one who's sending these text messages to uh, Ms. Ayers? Yes, Your Honor. I have a copy of the PPO in front of me, and I do agree that all of that was sent between her and I. All right. And what what more did you want to tell me? Um, I guess to start, I am a I work in nursing, and I'm a state mandated reporter. Um, so I will own 100% that I did contact CPS based on um, my experience with abuse. There were some things uh, living with Kimberly that I was very concerned with. Um, so I do want to openly admit that I did call CPS under uh, concern for the child's well-being and her safety. Um, I'm a state mandated reporter. I, if I saw signs of abuse and neglect and I didn't report it and something were to be happening, then that could, you know, that could come back on me potentially. Um, in addition to that, it's not my job to dictate whether or not it's a false, uh, false accusation or not. I was concerned for Kimberly and I acted as what the state of Michigan has directed me to do when I see signs of abuse or potential neglect. So I do want to just put so, that up a state mandated reporter. So, so who's, who's Kimberly? Kimberly Silvius is Mitchell Silvius and Kelly Ayers' daughter. How old is she? She's eight years old. And who did you suspect of some kind of child abuse or neglect? I suspected Andrew Ayers, Kelly Ayers' husband, based on certain signs and uh, um, just signals that I had been seeing, heavy gifting, buying a lot of presents, um, forcing uh, Kim to call him daddy, uh, things like that. I don't, I don't want to go any further into that because it really doesn't bear on the PPO. I just uh, wanted to know who it was that you suspected. Sure. Uh, so I, I understand that uh, filing a uh, complaint with uh, CPS is not something that I would uh, uh, consider as a basis for issuing a PPO. I wouldn't issue a PPO to stop people from filing reports with CPS. Uh, uh, that's beyond the, the scope of what I would do. But these text communications, uh, I uh, and since you acknowledge that you've made them, uh, they they clearly rise to the level of harassing in nature. You really have no reason to be communicating with Ms. Ayers. Uh, 
these were sent on more than one occasion. So that creates the two instances that is required for the court to issue a um, non-domestic uh, uh, PPO. Uh, I believe a factual basis has been established for me to do that. I will issue a PPO prohibiting I, you from... I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm slightly confused because she has contacted me in regards to this as well. She's responded as well as given personal information in the form of her email. The PPO was never an issue until I refused to give her court evidence against her ex-husband for FOC. So I have proof and it's been sent to you as well that I have her saying, can you, can you send me the file of recording? And then as well, including her email when I no longer responded to her um, and sent her the information that she was requesting to incriminate her ex-husband that's when this PPO came out and, and established I work in nursing I am technically not allowed to have a PPO I have nothing to do with this case anymore nor do I have any contact with her ex-husband so I'm not quite sure what merits a PPO when there is proof in here that she has contacted me as well as given additional personal information to contact her. The only form of communication we have had this entire time is via Facebook and my cell phone, which she has called multiple times herself. So I'm not quite sure why that would mean harassment when she's asking me to contact her. Um, Ma'am, these communications are harassing in nature. There's more than one of them. That's sufficient for me to issue a PPO. I'm going to issue a PPO. Mr. White, if you could prepare and submit one to the court. Sure, you'll uh, issue it a will... like you issued a no contact order and FOC as well. So you go right ahead and issue that PPO, Your Honor, but you don't have any idea what's going on with this case besides a bitter baby mama. That's all you have right now. So it's very unfortunate. Right won't even listen to my side of the story, but you've been listening. Listen, Ma'am, I listened to enough to make a decision. Uh, Mr. White, the PPO should prohibit uh, all forms of harassment that are listed. You can check every box. You can also check the box for posting a message through the use of any medium of communication. Uh, this PPO will remain in effect until 1231 of 21. Uh, we provide that the clerk will file a copy with the uh, Jackson Police Department and the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. Uh, as soon as I receive that, I will sign it. Thank you. I'll, I'll submit that electronically. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. Happy New Year. client back here you're back in your honor okay uh, Shannon you can put us back on the record please okay all right uh, we're back on the record uh, first issue we need to address on the record is the uh, waiver of a uh, conflict uh, mr. Lujurai yes thank you your honor uh, mr. Silvius one of the issues that's arisen in this case is the criminal case that you had in 2015, you were represented by Michael Fallahy of Mr. White's office. Do you recall that? Yes. And you understand um, because Mr. White is in the same office as Mr. Fallahy that there is a potential conflict of interest here for him representing um, your ex-wife. You understand that? Yes. And I have indicated to you that um, Mr. White has indicated, at least when we were in chambers, that he doesn't intend to bring up that criminal case from 2015. I told you that. Yes. And you understand that um, a conflict <laughs> is that it's you have a right to waive the conflict or not waive the conflict. You understand that, right? Yes. 
And I've explained to you how conflicts work. Yes. And you're willing to waive the conflict and let Mr. White proceed in representing Miss Ayers. Yes. Any questions for Mr. White or the court? Uh, none for me. If I may, Your Honor. Um, I... Go ahead. Uh, it, Mr. Legere is absolutely correct. I, I have, there's no need to bring up any of the 2015 uh, criminal case or any of that. It's, uh, it's all prior to the, two, the motion that was filed by my client. It probably wouldn't be proper to be brought up anyway, and it certainly doesn't appear to be an issue in this case today. All right. Well, I'm satisfied that uh, whatever conflict does exist here has been uh, uh, properly waived on the record. So uh, uh, initially, I want to hear uh, Mr. White from your client regarding the uh, therapist that the child has been seeing. So, ma'am, if you could raise your right hand, please. Uh, you do swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Uh, state your full name for the record. Kelly, <laughs> so that let us know you can hear. You can hear. Okay, Judge. My name is Kelly Ayers. Oh yeah, can I can hear her fine. Can you spell your last name, please? A Y R E S. Miss Ayers, you filed a motion on your own initially in August, early August of 2020 for a change of custody. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Since then, have you engaged the services of a counselor for your minor child? Yes. Did you have any discussions with <clears throat> Mr. Silvius prior to doing so? Prior to doing so, we have had a discussion about it. When was that discussion? Where? When was it, first of all? It was over the summer of 2020. Would it have been before or after you filed your motion on August 6th, if you recall? Uh, in passing, it was before the motion that was filed. So it was before? Yes. Where did this occur at? Uh, would have been our driveway. Did you, do you have in-person exchanges uh, with Mr. Sylvius when you exchanged any? Do you, do you, you actually uh, saw Mr. Mr. Other? White. Mr. White, I'm sorry. Uh, Shannon, she's kind of hard to hear. You could avoid running the printer. I, I couldn't hear her. Could could you repeat the last question and answer? And I'll try to turn the volume up a little bit. I'll get closer. Yeah, make sure you move a little closer. Can I take my mask off? Um, I prefer you didn't. Okay. Um, I'm autoimmune compromised, so it's kind okay. of an issue for me. Um, where did this take place? This conversation you had? Would have been at our driveway. In Napoleon? Yes. And can you tell the court what what that conversation entailed and what Mr. Sylvia's response was, if any? Okay. Uh, he dropped her off at 6.30 in the morning, like usual, so he can go to work. And that particular day, she was upset. She was crying a lot. She was tired. And I noticed that there was a lot of emotions. And so I said, told him that I'm just going to have her see a counselor because of things that have happened in the past, the divorce, which can affect kids, and all these emotions with ADHD that she's still learning how to manage. How did Mr. Sylvius respond to that? You're making he shrugged. A, he shrugged his shoulders. He shrugged his shoulders. Is that a typical response from Mr. Sylvius when you discuss things with him? Yes. <clears throat> Did you ever have any occasion to discuss it with him before or after, I should say? Uh, we did not discuss it, the counseling afterwards, uh, more because his girlfriend was involved. Now, you made this appointment. Did you? How did it normally work or what's the history been as far as medical, dental, and the, the types of appointments for Kimmy? Who's been the one that's taken care of all that? I make all medical, dental, every single appointment, um, all of her ADHD appointments, school appointments. Everything. So you making this therapist appointment was just another medical appointment you made for your child? Just a normal routine. 
Did you did you ever have any objection from Mr. Solius at all about this? No. Okay. That's all I have for now, Your Honor. Thank you. I, I missed something that your client said uh, about the reason for uh, seeking therapy. Oh. She did say something about ADHD, but just before that, she said something else that I did not catch. Okay. What? What was the reason that you brought this up with Mitch about getting therapy for King? Oh, to help her understand the divorce that Mitch and I went through, to help her understand the separate homes and understanding all that process. Were there some issues going on that gave you concern about Kimmy's mental health? She would always be tired. Uh, she didn't want to go with Mitch, no matter how much we've tried to encourage her. And We've tried to get him involved as well, trying to make a smooth exchange every time. Okay. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, questions, Mr. Lujurai. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. When was the conversation in your driveway? Do you remember the date? I do not remember the date. And would it be fair for me to say that you and Mitch primarily communicate via text messaging? Uh, not primarily. Well, how else do you communicate? Verbally. How often? On Sundays during exchanges. On Sundays during exchanges. And so that's about once a week? Yes. Do you, do you guys communicate verbally any other time? Do you guys call each other on the phone since August, let's say, 1st of 2020? We do not call each other on the phone. So you communicate sometimes at exchanges. Do you communicate every time at exchanges? Not every time. In the past, when it relates to doctor's appointments, that would be something that you would text to Mitch? Uh, he's never really shown any interest in knowing about her medical. That wasn't my question. Do you text him information about doctor's appointments? No. Um, do you never? Uh, sometimes, okay. when I think about it, I tell him if she has a doctor's appointment. You indicated that your daughter has uh, ADHD. Do you text them information about the ADHD? He should know about it. So yes, that's not. Uh, once again, that's not my question. Um, Do you text him information about that? No. Okay, so you claim that you don't know the day, but at some point, at some time in your driveway, you indicated to Mitch that you wanted your daughter, Kimmy, to see a therapist. Is that correct? Correct. Did you identify the therapist? No. Have you ever identified the therapist to Mitch? No. How often does Kimmy see this therapist? Every other week. On what days? Thursdays. And those are days that the child is with you? Those are the Correct. weeks that the child is with you? Yes? Yeah. How many times has the child seen the therapist? Um, how about 12? Have you met with the therapist? Yes. Have you given the therapist a history? Yes. Is the therapist a social worker, a psychologist, or a psychiatrist? Which one? Psychologist. Okay. Has the therapist, um, have you met with the therapist one-on-one, -on -one, like had your own appointment with the therapist? No. Has your current husband met with the therapist? No. Have you, um, have you given the therapist Mr. Silvius's contact information? No. Who pays for the therapist? Insurance. Do you have any co-pays that you pay? Is there any out of pocket? No. Who gets the bills for the therapist? My husband. Just so we're clear, you've never indicated to Mitch that the <clears> child <throat> was seeing this particular <clears throat> That is correct. You never followed up after that conversation with Mitch where you said, I think Kimmy should see a therapist. 
No. You never told them when she was starting to see a therapist? No. You never told them how often she was seeing a therapist? No. You never gave an update as to the progress of therapy? No. And the reasons why you told him that you think Kimmy should see a therapist was for management of her ADHD and processing the divorce that you guys had six and a half years ago. Is that right? Yes. That's the reason you gave match. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Who takes the child to the therapist? I do. The, do you get progress notes from the therapist? No. Do you talk to the therapist after appointments? Yes, briefly. Has the therapist expressed any concerns regarding Kimmy to you? No. Then why is this therapist here to testify? I'm sorry, Mr. Ledrag, she said yes, that there was. I'm not sure I understand your question. I thought she said no. Okay. So okay. the therapist has expressed concerns to you. Yes. Okay. Do these concerns relate to Mr. Silvius? Yes. Have you discussed those concerns with Mr. Silvius? Yes. What have you discussed with him? His drinking. He drinks alcohol often. Okay. Are you at his house when he's drinking alcohol? No. You haven't seen him drinking alcohol, not in the last several months. Is that a fair statement on my part? That's correct. So you have really no foundation from your own personal knowledge as to how much he drinks or doesn't drink. Is that correct? Your Honor, I have no further questions for Ms. Ayers. Um, I would like to examine my client about this therapist. Uh, certainly. Any redirect, Mr. White? Not, not at this. No, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Silvius, would you raise your right hand, please? Uh, you do swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God? Yes. Uh, state your full name. You can put your hand down. Mitchell Ryan Silvius. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Lujeri. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Silvius, you heard the testimony of Ms. Ayers? Yes. Do you recall, uh, first of all, are there any text messages between you and Ms. Ayers that <clears throat> the therapist for your daughter? No. Are there any text messages between you and Ms. Ayers that reference the therapist in any way? Nope. She indicated that on, on some unidentified date that there was a conversation in her driveway about Kimmy seeing a therapist. Do you recall any such conversation? No, I do not. Um, have you ever discussed Kimmy seeing a therapist with Ms. Ayers in the last, let's say, year? No. Has, has Ms. Ayers ever named, other than today, when I told you that the therapist's name was Alan Hauser, have you ever heard that name before? No. Did you know that Kimmy was seeing a therapist? No. Nobody ever informed you of that? No. Have you ever been contacted by a therapist for your input? No. Have you received any bills from any therapist? No. Have you have you received any consent to treatment from a therapist? No. Does your daughter have ADHD? Yes, she does. Is that being managed? Yes, it is. Is it being managed well? Yes. As it relates to other doctor's appointment, has Ms. Ayers told you about those in the past? There are times where Kim has doctor's appointments on the weeks that I have her, and Kelly does tell me when those appointments are, if they are on my weeks, and she takes care of it. I'm usually at work. Your Honor, that's, that's all that I have for my client. Um, I would just like the court to know that these parties have joint legal custody. Um, 
and before a child is seen by a therapist. I think that's a joint decision as to one, should the child have therapy, and two, who that therapist should be. Uh, questions, uh, Mr. White. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Sylvius, um, it's accurate that uh, Kelly's been always the, the one that has made medical and dental appointments uh, for Kimmy, is that correct? Yes. So it wouldn't be unusual that she would simply make this appointment like she makes the dental and medical appointments then, right? This appointment is unusual because I was not told all the other doctor's appointments I am made aware of by her. This was a complete surprise to me. Well, we've all got hundreds of pages of text messages. Of those, there's any real reference to those. It must be that she's told you during an exchange, right? Yes. Just like she says she told you during an exchange about this, it's kind of been handled the same way as the medical then, right? Not sure as I understand your question. That's okay. That's all I'd have, Your Honor. <clears throat> so, uh, Mr. Silvius, um, do you recall sometime last summer during an exchange or maybe more than one exchange where uh, your daughter was uh, particularly or unusually upset? Uh, she has her emotional states from time to time and generally kelly and i we handle them together well if if kim is having an issue i if i'm having an issue with her for emotions then i communicate with kelly about it uh, the, the the question <coughs> was was there an exchange let's say in august where kimmy was upset when you were dropping her off as miss Ayers testified is that what you were asking, Your Honor? She testified that the occasion when she told Mr. Silvius that she thought their child should see a therapist happened during an exchange when the child was uh, upset. I have never dropped Kim off. To Kelly and have Kim to be in an upset state, at least not that I have seen. How about when you, when she's dropped off to you? Uh, Your Honor, I pick her up and most of the time when I pick her up, I, I can't think of an instant where she was upset or manic. So the, at the beginning of your week, you pick up the child? That is correct. And at the end of the week, uh, her mother picks her up from your location. No, Your Honor, I pick her up and drop her off at the mother's house. So all of the exchanges take place there. Correct. Are there occasions when she doesn't want to go with you? It has been a really long time since that's happened, but that's happened in the past. Like years ago. Did it happen? Did it happen at all last summer? I can recall one instance when she wanted to stay one more day with her mom, and I did not find it to be that big of a deal. So I let her stay one more day and I picked her up the following day. <clears throat> uh counsel, any uh follow-up questions based upon mine? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right. Um, uh, it it certainly uh, sounds to me that Mom very well could have said to Dad she was thinking about getting the child into a therapist. It doesn't sound like she ever said. I'm definitely going to get her in to see a therapist. How do you feel about that? Uh, uh, do you want to be involved in picking the therapist? Clearly, no conversation like that ever occurred. Uh, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me based on what she described. Uh, I think she should see a therapist. Dad shrugged. 
uh, uh, and didn't really have a response to that, that that uh, is, is believable. Uh, I would have hoped that there be more conversation about a therapist when you share joint legal custody. Uh, that's a pretty significant step uh, uh, with a child. Uh, that there, uh, even if there's one parent that isn't actively engaging in medical appointments or such, that's still something that parents need to discuss. Uh, 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 who, you know, not, I'm thinking about it, or maybe she could benefit from it, but I found a therapist. I wanted to see this therapist. Here's who it is. That conversation needs to take place. Um, now, after saying that, uh, I, I do see value uh, in hearing from a therapist. Uh, I think it's only fair that Mr. Lujirai have a fair opportunity to, at a minimum, review the therapist's notes ahead of time. Uh, as far as taking the therapist's deposition, I mean, how strongly do you feel about that, Mr. Lujirai? Not that strongly, Your Honor. I haven't seen the notes. Um, but I, I'm not going to say that that's something usually I would do. I have done, but without seeing the notes, I don't know. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to doing as well as I'm supposed to be doing it, if that makes sense. So I'd want to see those notes. Those may be sufficient. Um, there have been times where I've received therapist notes, Your Honor, and their handwriting, if they're handwritten, it, it's it might as well be hieroglyphics and then under those circumstances i probably would want to take a deposition just to decipher their writing um but it's not something that i think i would do if the notes are otherwise legible all right uh, well i'm going to give you that opportunity um i'm not going to take any other testimony today mainly because i want it to be fresh in my mind uh when i hear it and in the context um, uh, so what I'm going to do is adjourn for today. I'm going to find a date for you just as quickly as I can. I know you're anxious to get this resolved. Um, and I think for the benefit of the child, I want to give this a uh, priority, but I want to give Mr. Lujuri the opportunity to, uh, review the therapist notes. And if after receiving the notes, he desires to depose the therapist, I want to give him that opportunity as well. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, I will have Dawn uh, get with both of you to try to find a date that works. Um, and uh, 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 hopefully we can get the information from the therapist promptly. Can't imagine why there should be too much delay, but uh, I'd like I'd like to be able to resume this in no more than a month, uh, hopefully sooner than that. Um, just, just so the court knows, I, I, I am out of town February 13th through the 20th. I was supposed to go to Mexico, but now we're going to Florida because I didn't want to get stuck in Mexico. Um, and then I have a trial on March 1st. So, um, but. All right. I'll just have Dawn get with both of you and figure out something that works with everyone's schedule. Thank you, Your Great. Honor. Well, Nick, I will email you the uh, all the information I have um, for the therapist. I'll send that to you here shortly. Yeah, and if and if what your client could do just to expedite this, <coughs> sign a release for the therapist Absolutely. from my office, the entire file, um, yeah, not the treatment notes, the consents to treatment, anything like that. Absolutely. We'll right. take care of that uh, forthwith.